Today's a pretty good day. Why? Because it's brew day. Now then, welcome to my very first uh, recording of a brew day. I'm pretty excited about this. Um, the brew that I'm making is almost a smash. Um, smash, for those of you who uh, don't know, stands for single malt and single hop. Now I'm using a single hop in this um, beer recipe, but I'm also using two malts. Um, uh, I'll show you the ingredients in a minute, but it's a pretty simple recipe. I'm only doing a gallon, mostly because that's the equipment I've got. I've got enough equipment to make a gallon of beer, so that's how much I'm going to make. So let's, let's take a look at the equipment and the ingredients. All right, so the first thing we've got is our malt or grains. And in this case, it's um, a kilogram of Maris Otter and 100 grams of Vienna Pilsner malt. And there are the hops. We've got six grams of Cascade to go in at 45 minutes into the boil. We've got six grams of Cascade to go uh, at 50 minutes left in the boil. And we've got 15 grams of Cascade to go in uh, at flame out. We've also got yeast. Got all the, these pans. I'm gonna be doing various bits of boiling in got a bucket, bucket I'm going to use to collect wort, got my fermenting carboy, blow off tubes, thermometer, muslin cloths, and back here we've got some sanitizer in a beer bottle that I'm going to use as a, uh, my blow off tube. Now, everything you see here, everything has been sanitized rigorously. I've even got some more sanitizer over here in the bucket in case I need it. Um, and the sanitizer I, I use is a uh, Starsan non-rinse sanitizer. Uh, the reason I use the non-rinse sanitizer uh, should be fairly obvious. Don't have to rinse it, rinsing is a pain. Um, when I had the kit beer, or when I had the IPA kit, I had to use a rinse um, sanitizer for that, and that was a royal pain in the bottom. So let's crack on with the brew. And the first thing we've got to do is we're going to heat our two liters of water in this pan up to temperature. We want it to be 66 degrees Celsius, and then we're going to put in our oats. All right, so. This, this water is now at temperature. In fact, it's just a couple of degrees over, which is fine because it's gonna lose a little bit of temperature once I put all the, the grains in. So, I've got my grains. Let's get them in. Now, I didn't mention at the beginning that I've bought ready milled grains. Obviously, you can mill them yourselves, but I don't have the capacity currently to do that. So I've gone and bought ready milled. All right, so this is the point of the brew, which is called the mash. Grains are in the, the warm water. Let's take a temperature reading. So 
actually a little cold, so I'm gonna give it a quick blast of heat. Now obviously, what this stage of the brew is, is it's extracting all the sugars that are in the, um, in the grains there. So by heating it up and in the water, all the sugars get into the water, and that's what the yeast uses to ferment and create beer. So once this is up to temperature, the lid's gonna go on, the heat's gonna go off, I'm gonna wrap it in a towel and I'm just gonna leave it for an hour, coming back occasionally to give it a bit of a stir. But so that'll be the first stage of brewing. So let's give that another temperature read. Okay, that's perfect, bang on 66. So like I say, lid goes on. Towel goes round. Bit of insulation. And there we're gonna leave it for a little bit. So the mash has been mashing for an hour. So what we have to do now is bring this up to, temp up to 77 degrees in a process called mashing out. While that's happening, it needs to be stirred constantly. What I've got here is I'm heating up some water for sparging. What sparging is, is after we've mashed out the grains, we're gonna put it into this bucket through this muslin cloth to hold all the grains. And then we put the water over the top of that to wash all the sugars out of the grain itself. So, Let's mash out this grain. So I'm going to heat it up, continue to stir it, and I'll take a temperature reading in a moment. Get all those lovely sugars out, ready for fermentation. So we can get some lovely, lovely beer. Right, let's take a temperature reading. Really do need to buy an electronic one of these because this takes forever. Okay, a little while to go there then. So there it is, it's now at temperature. So we're gonna take the pan. Too hot for my baby soft hands. And we're going to pour all the grain into there. And that's coming off. Fantastic. all the grain into there all right so what I've done is I've taken all the liquid that was in there put it in this pan these two pans are now at 68 degrees Celsius so I'm going to pour these two pans of water over my grains in what's called sparging
Oh, ow, that's hot. And there we have it. That is my wart. So now what I need to do is I need to bring this up to the boil. Just need to get it to the point where you see what's called the hot break. And at that point, turn the heat down slightly and we let it boil for an hour. And at various points, we put our various hops in. And after that, we stick it in our carboy to ferment with some yeast. Right, we're just starting to reach the point of hot break now. Got this nice bubbling effect going along the top. Um, so I'm going to turn the heat down a bit. I'm just going to let that bubble away and in 15 minutes we'll add our first batch of hops. So we've been boiling for 15 minutes so it's time for our first hop addition. In go six grams of cascade hops. Lovely jubbly. Right, that's going to boil away for another 30 minutes before we add our next hops. Okay, so it's had another half an hour since our last hop addition, so time for some more hops. So now we've got 15 minutes left of boiling time. That will be then our last hop addition will go in. And then we'll start cooling the wort to fermenting temperature. Right, that's the end of the boil. Flame out. Last hop addition in. And now that is going to steep for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to put it in the water bath. So my wort has been uh, Netflix and chilling in the water bath to get it nice and cool. So it's almost at the temperature where we want to pitch the yeast. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to strain off the hops because we don't want the hops in the fer in fermenting carboy because it'll add too much of that grassy taste. If you want to dry hop something, you need to do it towards the end of fermentation, not right at the start. You'll get too much of that grassy taste. So I'm going to strain it off into this bucket, take a gravity reading, take a temperature reading, get it in my uh, carboy and pitch the yeast. So let's get cracking. <laughs> See if I can get a gravity reading on this. I can't. I can't do it in there. We'll see if we can do it when we get it in there. Because unfortunately, although I managed to buy myself a hydrometer, I didn't buy myself a um, test tube to put it in, like a dingleberry. So, 
Let's get our water into our carboy. And that's where it cut out. Ugh. Turns out I hadn't enough memory left in the camera to get all that footage in. So it's the next day, Sunday. Um, I've been coaching American football today. Uh, our team beat Radford 34-6. Uh, very pleased about that. And I'm also very pleased about my beer, which I've got chilling over here. Now you didn't see me take a gravity reading. The gravity was 1060 which is going to give me a nice 6% beer. But let's take a look at what it's doing in the corner. So here we are. I've got the um, blow off tube going into a bottle of Star San Sanitizer. I'm not sure if you can see the bubbles popping up there. So I've got some lovely um, fermenting activity going on. Um, it's currently wrapped in a towel. That's not um, to do anything to do with heat. It's quite warm in the house. It's mostly to do with keeping the light off the off the um, hops because I've heard that light can skunk hops and give it a nasty skunk flavour. So there we are. Um, proof that you can do fairly simple one gallon all grain homebrew in the comfort of your own kitchen. So please give this video a like, give it a good thumbs up. Um, check me out on Twitter. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the blog where I'll be writing write-ups on everything I'm doing uh, with home brewing. And stick around for more videos. We've got the tasting of my very first home brew coming up uh, later in the week. And we'll also be checking, checking on this beer to see how it's getting on. So, cheers guys. Thanks for checking me out.